Welcome back, Buck fans. Year two of the No Quarter Given podcast. We are part of the BuckPower.com podcast network. Working for our fearless boss man over in England, Mr. Paul Stewart. Thank you for allowing Peter Blake and I to go for year two of the No Quarter Given podcast, where we are talking all things 2022 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And mm-hmm. we're also going to look back into the past, Mr. Peter Blake. Mm-hmm. Just old school Buccaneers from yesteryear. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Blake. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. It's good to be back for another year of no quarter given. And I don't know about you, but uh, this seems like a, another exciting year, possibly Tom Brady's last year. And it gets kicked off and started off like it did uh, last year with the Dallas Cowboys this time on Sunday Night Football. That's right. We this time we go to Big D. No, not not a home game for our, the Bucks. We yep. are on the road in Dallas for the first two games this year at Dallas at New Orleans. Very challenging start, and then then home to Can or Green Bay and then Kansas City. So a very challenging first four weeks of the year. Want to mention this podcast is presented by Beefo Brady's Hank's Barbecue and Home Slice Pizza. Beefo Brady's located in Tampa on the corner of. Bush Boulevard and Himes Avenue over in the Forest Hills area, right out the right by Carrollwood and Forest Hills. Definitely check out the, the new Beefs location, uh, remo- fully remodeled restaurant. TJ Maloof, the owner, done a great job. We appreciate TJ for bringing us, for allowing us to, to partner with him this year. Peter Blake and I are going to be doing some buck content over there at Beefs. So definitely come out and check out Beefs. We're going to be there all throughout the football year, a couple times a month at least. Whether it's college football on Saturdays, the NFL on Sundays, I think Peter and I are going to make some Thursday night appearances. I know when the Bucks play Thursday night, that'll be a that'll be our place to be for sure. So looking forward to this partnership with Beefs, uh, Hank's Barbecue, and Home Slice Pizza Company. So love it. Looking forward to getting on the road with you once again, my man. It's always on the road with my tag team partner, Mr. Jason Powers, the tag team champions of the world. With of course. Our manager, Mr. Uncle T.J. Reeves there, a.k.a. Freddie Blassie. And we got J.J. Dillon over in England with Mr. Paul Stewart, who's yeah. kind of coordinating it all for us. So, again, Buck fans, buckpower.com is your place. If, I, if you don't know about this site, trust me when I tell you it's the best place on the planet to go for Bucks information, stats, video, audio, every game in the Bucks history, every roster in Bucks history. He has every day he updates it with clips. We're also we might be we're gonna probably be doing a little post game show as well possibly as part of this Buck Power TV uh, is what we're doing that's that's gonna be breaking here in the next few days so be on the lookout for a little post game coverage on Buck Power TV with myself probably Mr. Blake here Paul Stewart and then a, our our man Steve Carney our techno our uh, technical director we'll call him our director of operations for Buck Power TV so that's gonna be coming here real soon as well so. Let's get to training camp, Peter Blake. How about let's start training camp? Let's start right at the top, man. Our guy TB12 takes an 11 day break in training camp. Lots of speculation. Vacation. Is he doing a TV show? Is there some family issues going on? Do you think that 11 day break is going to have any bearing on the Bucks season at all? No, not at all. But of course, if the Bucs do get off to a slow start and Tom Brady does get off to a slow start, everybody will be talking about it. And of course, uh, Tom comes out in the presser after the Indianapolis game and says, look, I'm 45 and I have lots of spit. And that's not important. Basically, that's what he kind of said. I got a lot of substitute an H for the P. Right. A lot of stuff to deal with, as we all are when we get older at, you know, at this age. So. Who knows what's going on? Do I think it affects uh, his play on the field? I don't think so. In fact, it most likely will motivate him. And he's probably going to have the same type of year he had last year, 40 touchdowns and oh, maybe 10 or 11 interceptions. And everybody will forget about the 11 day week or 11 day break that he had uh, during training camp. Let's go to the roster. 53 man roster has been, been established. We're taping this the the the, of the Labor Day night of game week, so there potentially could be a roster move or two later in the week. But we think the roster is pretty set heading into week one. The big question mark. Before we get to that, let's get to the the guys that made the team and didn't make the team. 
Your mm-hmm. biggest surprise of who did not make the Buccaneer roster? I, I think it was Tyler Johnson, right? I mean, we kind of talked about it, that he was having a good preseason. He definitely had an opportunity to come in here and win a role. And because he was a fifth-round pick and because he was showing out this year and was in good shape, I thought he would make it, but he didn't make it. So that was probably one of my biggest. I thought Giovanni Bernard making the team. So they decided to go with him. And instead of going with just three running backs, they went with four running backs. So I think those were probably my biggest surprises. And then they trade Grant Stewart to the Indianapolis Colts uh, and the, uh, the young undrafted rookie. Madukasi uh, makes Badu it. Kasi. There you go. He made the. So I think that was probably my biggest surprise. And then announced today, you have the rookie, uh, Gadecki, who is going to be starting at left guard. And yeah. then you also have Jamel Dean, who is going to be your second cornerback over Sean Murphy Bunting. So some moves there made. So those were probably my biggest surprises. Yep. I think, again, I think you're going to see plenty of uh, Murphy Bunting in, in the nickel package and all that stuff. You got Logan Ryan back there as well. Interesting move for me was, again, you, you mentioned the Tyler Johnson. They keep Scotty Miller and they keep Brashard Perriman and they keep Jalen Darden. Kind of mm. special teams skills that they some of those guys have that maybe Tyler Johnson didn't have. I think Todd Bowles mentioned that in the making the move is Tyler Johnson doesn't do anything on special teams. And for, for being a fifth receiver, not doing anything on special teams, pretty hard to keep on the roster. Absolutely. And then on top of it, look, he had an opportunity last year when all those injuries were happening to that unit to step up and he really didn't do that. And I get it. He had a good camp, a good preseason, but you know, too little, too late at the end of the day, Tyler Johnson, didn't he just sign with the Houston Texans along with our old friend, OJ Howard, right? Yes. You're right. Right on. That's that again. And both those guys will probably play in Houston. Those guys are upgrades for what Houston probably has. So good for them that they're going to get an opportunity. More so Tyler Johnson than OJ. OJ might be at the end of the line here. Buffalo released him. So who knows how that's going to go. But I think Tyler Johnson can definitely help the Texans uh, in in that rebuild program. All right, let's talk about a couple of of sneaky good moves I think the Bucs made late in training camp. I think bringing Carl Nassib back was a sneaky good move. He's had some success in that defense a couple years back. He's a great rotational guy in that defensive line. In the event Sho- Tryon Shoyinka doesn't, you know, isn't super effective. If you have an injury, he'll be a perfect role player. He won't cause any, ru- he won't ruffle any feathers. Everybody likes him. Your thoughts, Carl Nassib? Well, it got opened up because he lost Cam Gill to a major injury, and he was starting to really come on. So they like their rotation. They like it even better now. And you kind of relate or kind of compare, if you will, Carl Nassib to Anthony Nelson. Same type of body type. Uh, deceptively quick, yep. your sneaky athleticism. Uh, and NASA before has performed well in the Todd Bowles defense. So it'll be interesting how they use him. You know that with the hot weather here in Tampa, they're going to have lots of rotation there at the end of the day. And uh, you know, lots of skill players on this defense. Uh, I'm really excited about seeing Hakeem Hex. I keep on going back to it. Yep. I think he's an upgrade. If he can stay healthy, and that is the whole deal, with this defense in 2022, can they go back to last year and they had all kinds of injuries? Can they stay healthy? If they can stay healthy, this could be the most talented defense they've had uh, since the Super Bowl year. And, and Todd Bowles came out in his press conference earlier earlier this week and said, we think this is the most depth we've ever had here with he and B.A. Obviously, B.A. is not on the field anymore, but the, even more than the championship year, most depth, most, you know, from top to bottom, They've got depth all over the roster, which I think is a great thing. Again, I think, again, the one area that we, you know, all Buck fans are probably nervous as hell about is the interior of that offensive line. Get a key, Hainsey, you know, obviously you saw Hainsey and Leverett get hurt in the Indianapolis game. Sounds like they're going to be good to go come week one. Cause I think, I think if they weren't, I think you'd have seen the Bucks made a, tr- make a trade to go get a center. If they really thought that was going to be a lingering injury. So I th- all indications are that, Hainsey and, and 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 they've made the decision on Gedeke, but Leverett and Hainsey sound like they're going to be a good to go. I think Shaq Mason's going to be a nice addition on the offensive line. I think he got great tack. I, I know Tristan Wirfs is great. I think Donovan Smith is above average. I know mm. you're not the biggest Donovan guy, but I think he's serviceable enough. And I think Brady will do plenty enough to get the ball out of his hands. And I think you, you make a great point. We've talked about all offseason. 
I think you're going to see a more balanced running attack here in, in, in with Gedeke and Hainsey at center and guard. Is it Gedeke or is it Gedeke? And I tell you right now, if you want to find out, you go to buckpower.com in order to find out. It's Gedeke, not Gedeke, like I said before, and you're exactly right. You know, what kind of guard is he going to be? He's a rookie. Is he going to be the next coming of Ali Marpet? I talked to him during the draft process. That was one of the guys he looked up to, along with Braden Smith, who plays for the Indianapolis Colts at tackle. He's got the physicality. It seems like the Bucs are very comfortable, so we'll see what happens at the end of the day. But that is the major thing, the major question mark for me with the losses in the offseason. You got Shaq Mason, but as we talked about on the uh, on your Powers on Sports podcast, you know Tom Brady can make an offensive line look like the best offensive line in the world with his decision making, with getting rid of the ball as quickly as possible, and with all the weapons at those skill positions for the Buccaneers. Yep. Fans should be excited this year. And I think yeah, the biggest question on offense for me is going to be what's Chris Godwin's status early in the year. You make right. a great insurance policy by signing Julio Jones. Sounds like Russell Gage is going to be really close to being back in week one. I think even if you have to hold out Godwin, I know he wants to play, but if you have to hold him out a week, maybe even two, I think you do that because I think you're going to get the best Julio Jones early in the year. He's fully healthy. He's, they've saved him from playing in the preseason. He caught a couple balls from Brady in that last game. And I think even if you have to sit Godwin for the first week or two, and he did practice today with no knee brace, he's going away from the knee brace. Now, does that make him fully clear to play? We don't know for Sunday, but I think the Julio Jones move is a great insurance policy. It is. And again, you got Russell Gage. You talk about him. Both of those players coming from, uh, well, having experience in Atlanta. Of course, Julio having a little stint there in Tennessee. You got Scotty Miller and Jalen Darden. I mean, the big question for me is, you know, what is the impact of no Rob Gronkowski, not only as a pass catching threat, but also as an inline blocker? What's right. the impact on the offensive line? What's the impact? of the running game. And furthermore, like we talked about before at nauseum in this off season, Todd Bowles being the coach, does that change your offensive philosophy? I get it. You have Tom Brady, but does this team become more balanced? Do they run the ball with Leonard Fournette? Um, are, are they passing less at that point? And does that help that team? And I've always said when this team becomes balanced, they become that much more dangerous because when you have the threat of the running game, then that's when that pass play action and those deep plays down the field can really happen. All right, let's let's talk special teams, and then we're gonna then we're gonna hear from Paul Stewart, who's gonna give us a little historical background montage of the Dallas Cowboys special teams. Interesting battle in training camp between Borgallis and Suckup. Suckup remains the kicker. You know, again, Bowles made the comment. I mean, you talked about this when he missed that kick in Week One, the game winner. Against the Dolphins, not a good, not, not probably not a, not going to make the roster because Todd Bowles wants consistency. You can't you can't throw away games with a rookie kicker early in this year by missed kicks late in the games. I think Suckup doesn't have the strongest leg, but again, he can make a fifty yard kick. Is he going to make a fifty five yarder? No, but he can make the forty eight to fifty yard kicks. Month, crunch time, pressurized kick. He's a veteran in this league, and I think that's what paid dividends for Ryan Suckup to stay on the roster. I agree. I agree. And from 40 yards, uh, he's money. He's money at the end of the day, 30, 40 yards. He's great. Like you said, he doesn't have uh, the best leg, but at the end of the day, you can't miss kicks. And we know that this Dallas game coming up on Sunday night could come down to a kick because consequently last year's game did come down to a kick and suck up made it. Yeah. So that's the reason why you go with them. And the kid had every opportunity to make those kicks and pressure situations and he wasn't able to make them. Why am I, you know, all of a sudden going to give him the job because that was yeah. just preseason. This is the real time here. So you go with the veteran at the end of the day, you go with Ryan Succo. So we're going with a rookie punter, Kamara out of Georgia, the drafted kid. Clearly he was going to be the guy. The one concern I have with him, you didn't, you saw a lot of long returns in the preseason against the Buccaneer return team. Part of that is who's who's on the return team at the time because of backups. But the other part of it is he kicks the ball a long way, but not necessarily with the most hang time. So that's going to you know promote some longer returns. kamarda has got to do a better job of more hang time. We don't need a 55-yard kick. We'll take a 48-yard kick with more hang time, more fair catches, as opposed to the rocket 55-yarder that, get, that gets returned 20 yards. 
Agree. And your special teams unit has to play better. I get it. It's preseason, but all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams, if you're lacking in one of those areas, that can come back to haunt you. We we watched the game last night with LSU and Florida State. Yes. I don't have to tell you how much it cost the LSU Tigers last night for a win. No, I mean, you're right. I think that's that typically is the part of the roster week one and week two in the NFL. That's the shakiest because guys aren't you got new guys on the roster that are playing special teams. The first time they've had to do this in their career for a lot of these guys. So big returns, the teams that can protect the punter, protect the field goal units. These hidden points and hidden yards. These first couple of weeks are going to be huge. Agree. All right. We're going to we're going to we're going to go to Paul Stewart now. For his montage history, historical look back, Bucks Cowboys. So enjoy Paul Stewart, and we'll be back in just a moment. All right, we are back on the No Quarter Given podcast presented by Beef O'Brady's, Bush Boulevard, and Himes Avenue, Hank's Barbecue, and Home Slice Pizza, the new sponsor that's joined us. This year, hopefully you get to enjoy them if you're in the Tampa Bay area over there in Forest Hills, right right on the on the edge of Carrollwood. Again, Peter Blake and I'll be there doing some content throughout the football year and look forward to doing that stuff. Hopefully you enjoy Paul's look back at the Bucks Cowboys rivalry. Paul's going to be doing this montage every week for all the Bucks opponents. Love it. Week, yep. Next week it's going to be the New Orleans Saints, then the Green Bay Packers. He's going to do a great job again. Buckpower.com. You're going to hear video clips that you on this montage that you can find on buckpower.com, video clips as well, interviews, things like that that you're going to hear. We're also going to have some Buck legends on during the year. We're going to be bringing on some guys. I got a list of guys, Mr. Blake, that I'm reaching out to that we're going to get on this on this podcast live and in person to interview guys potentially like Hardy Nickerson, maybe a Warwick Dunn, maybe a Trent Dilfer kind of guy, maybe a Michael Husted. Wow. Got some feelers out for some guys. So be <laughs> paying attention, Buck fans. We're going to have some guys talking about their Buck careers and Buck history. Sounds good. All right. Let's get to it. Sunday night, Jerry World, Bucks, Cowboys, 830 NBC, Tariko and Collinsworth on the call. I can't wait till Sunday night, man. I got, you're going to make me, me and you're going to have to sit and watch games all day. Mm-hmm. Up to Sunday night, man. I can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. How do you see – give me a player or two on Dallas that we that the Buccaneers have to be aware of. Well, it's going to be C.D. Lamb because he's the only wide receiver right now that really has experience in this offense. They lost Amari Cooper. They've had injuries during uh, the offseason. They have a bunch of young guys. Are they just guys at this point? We shall find out. And then on top of it, you lose uh, – Tyron uh, Smith. Tyron, Tyron Smith as your left tackle, who is a pro bowler, who's a guy that's protecting Dak Prescott's uh, blind side. So what's the impact of that? I think those are the two things to watch for. We've been talking about the Bucks offensive line, but the Dallas Cowboy offensive line has plenty of questions. And at the end of the day, the expectations are always there uh, for Dallas. And Dak Prescott, and I get it, it was a high-scoring affair last year. More than likely, it could be a high-scoring affair this year. I'm just not sure if Dallas has enough offensively to score as many points as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this year. Just my opinion. I'm with you. I think I think the two guys the Buccaneers have to highlight in their preparation, CeeDee Lamb, you mentioned, and you cannot let Micah Parsons wreck the game on defense. You've there got you go. to. You've got to. The, Dallas has a good defense. I'll give them that. But Micah Parsons can wreck the game by himself. You have got to prevent him from wrecking the game. He was an impact player last year against the Buccaneers early. Defensive rookie of the year, National Football League. He's probably a top five defensive player in the league right now as a second year player. The Bucs have to scheme to prevent Micah Parsons from wrecking the game. Absolutely. You have Trayvon Diggs on that defense who's known to get some interceptions, but also give up Ambler. some big plays. So Ambler. Yep, and and definitely watch that matchup, whether it's Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, or Julio Jones at the end of the day. I mean, it's crazy to think Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Julio Jones could be on the field together. I mean, what are we talking about, really? I mean, this offense could be very explosive, and I get it. They got Micah Parsons, and they got some players on this team, but 
Just not sure if Dallas's defense can match up with the Bucs. And you will see, I guarantee you will see out of Byron Leftwich, Mr. Diggs is a very good corner, but he likes to gamble and cheat. You will see some double moves, some sluggos, some out and ups, you know, double move kind of stuff on Diggs. He's given up some touchdowns last year because he likes to gamble. And if he make if we if Brady makes a mistake, Diggs will make him pay with an interception, but he'll also bite on that slant or bite on that pump fake, which could open up some big plays. And again, Mike Evans coming home. He's a Texas guy. I look forward to Evans having a good week one. And again, I think this could be a week, even though you won't see a, probably as much production out of this position. Cam Brait, Kyle Rudolph will get some catches over the middle. That'll open up the outsides, I think, for the for, for the for the wideouts. And I agree with you. And what's the running game like? Is it going to be Leonard Fournette? Yes. Uh, is it going to be somebody that's going to step up? White, is he going to step up? Rashard White, is he going to be a player that makes an impact? The Bucs really like him. He could be an X factor that nobody is talking about on this team because they have a plethora of weapons. But I think, again, the focus will be on that Dallas defensive line versus that Bucks offensive line. Can they keep Tom Brady upright? If they can, boy, it could be uh, lots of fireworks, and that could be on Tampa Bay's side. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you the wild card guy for the Buccaneer defense this week, going up against a rookie left tackle, Tyler Smith out of Tulsa, who's who was projected as a guard, not a tackle when he, oh. when he got drafted, which is benefit Bucks. Joe Tryon Shoyinka showed some flashes in the preseason with some quickness around the edge. Look for Shoyinka and the, him and Shaq Barrett will be swapping sides from time to time. I like Shoyinka in that matchup against Tyler Smith, who had, a, if I think I saw in the draft preview, eight or nine, 10 holding calls last year at Tulsa as a tackle at Tulsa. Now you're in the National Football League as a left tackle going up against elite defensive ends. Yeah, and I'm looking for Carlton Davis matchup with C.D. Lamb because Lamb went off last year. Can he perform like the number one corner like he's paid uh, right now in the National Football League? Can he live up to that contract? I think he can. Once again, knock on wood, stay healthy. If that back end can stay healthy, the sky is the limit. They have improved. I look for Carlton Davis to have at least one interception in this game uh, in the, on, on Sunday night. And, and, and one more matchup to be aware of Bucks defensive line versus that running game. Don't let Zeke, Zeke Elliott get, get loose, get, I mean, not that he's going to go 80 yards, but again, you want to minimize the six, seven, eight yard runs. And the Bucks have been great the last several years against the run with Sue and Vita. Now you got a Keem Hicks in there, Vita, mm -hmm. you got to, you know, they're going to probably run at Shoyinka. The Dallas will probably run at Shoyinka, run away from, try to run away from Vita and, and Akeem Hicks. But Devin White, Levante David, do your jobs. Devin White's focused in the offseason. Do your job. Don't try to do too much. Don't try to overread the play. You and I both have talked about how he gets in trouble when he tries to do too much. Do what the defense is asking you to do. You got plenty of athleticism. Your thoughts, linebacking core. Yeah, linebacking core is definitely going to be a lot better than last year because as we learned in the offseason, David was only 60% coming off that Liz Frank injury. Seems like now he's 100%. We saw the decline uh, somewhat or uh, in, in a Devin White because, to me, he kind of regressed without a Levante David. Now you're going to have him back 100%. Hopefully, Devin White, once again, needs to take that next step in his game and be the linebacker that he wants to be, which is a $100 million linebacker. And that's a player that has to make plays, do your job, not necessarily have all the sacks and all the turnovers, but – Make some plays in this game to make this defense stand out. All right, buddy. Give me a score prediction. It's it's go time. I'm going to go 35 to 24 Tampa Bay over the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go 30 to 21 bucks. Again, I think you're going to see a solid effort all around. Again, a balanced effort. Wouldn't shock me if the Bucks go a little more two tight end sets this week with Brate and Rudolph. Maybe a little Kate Otten in there as well. Depending on this, again, we don't know what the status is with Chris Godwin yet or Russell Gage, but if Godwin's out, it wouldn't surprise me if you go Julio and Mike Evans with some more two tight ends. I think you're going to get 20 carries out of Leonard Fournette this week easily because, again, that's easier on these Hainsey and Gedeke to run block than to have to pass protect 30, 40, 40 to 45 times. I don't think you want to put those guys in their first game in that position. 
Yeah, look, if they try to double up on a Mike Evans, which is certainly possible because you're going to bracket coverage to him because he can make plays anywhere, yep. anytime. I look for Julio Jones to really stand out in this game, and I'm really excited to for him to be on this team. I think he can make some plays. Everything you've heard in camp, uh, he is the same guy that was in Atlanta. If that's true, look for him to have a major impact on Sunday night's game. You got it. We both love the Bucks here. The the spreads, I think, one, one and a half. I think if you're a gambler, I think the Bucks is the play all the way. I don't think Dallas offensively has enough weapons to score more than 21 to 24 points at most. And I think the Bucks will easily get to 24. Um, so I, I, I would take the Bucks if you're going to make a play in this game. I think the Bucks is the only play to make here Sunday night football. Peter Blake, tell everybody where they can find all your great work, man. Yeah, man. It's the evolution of Sports Talk Television. It's the Sports Web Live on Facebook at I Love St. Pete, the hub and amped up sports. Of course, like and subscribe to the Sports Web on YouTube and do three things as we get you ready for Tampa Bay Buccaneer football. Bring your passion. Bring your excitement. Just don't bring any nonsense. I'm your host, Peter Blake, giving you something to think about. And like I said, Buck fans, we'll be here every week. No quarter given. We'll be back next week for the New Orleans Saints. Again, Paul Stewart's going to be doing a, a little montage five- or six-minute clip uh, store, segment for us every week on the opponents. Again, we're going to have some Buccaneer legend guests here during the season. So keep it right here, buckpower.com podcast network. No quarter given. Subscribe, rate, and review. We'd love to hear your comments. Post Sports is my Twitter handle. Peter, you can find Peter on Facebook and Twitter as well. Reach out to Paul Stewart and tell, tell him how you think we're doing. We love all the comments we can get. But week one, National Football League, finally here. Can't wait. Go, here Bucks. We go. What What does my boy Tom like to say? Let's effing go. go. <laughs> See you next week, Buck fans. <laughs>